My prediction is that Google will come out on top. They are what OpenAI is trying to become, but they're already there. Time now for our weekly edition of The Editor's Cut. Each Friday, a rotating group of senior editors from The Information will join me to take you inside our newsroom to give you a look at how we talk about the biggest tech stories, how we debate what really matters, how we figure out what the smartest questions to ask next are. The topic of the conversation today is one that we talk about all the time in the battle of building and perfecting new AI models, which leaders have the tools to succeed and which leaders will start to lose interest. Today, we have the information's co-executive editors, Martin Piers and Amir Efradi. Martin, Amir, welcome to the Editor's Cut, or as I should say, the co-executive editor's cut. We are very excited to have you here. Martin hates it. I can see it already. He is like, oh my God, just start asking the question, Akash. <laughs> um, okay, well, just for that, I'm going to go to Amir first because Amir, you follow this space closer than anyone with the Frontier models. And look, we've got five big players as of now. You've got OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, Meta, and XAI. And the question that I want to ask you is, as you're thinking about the progress that these models are making, and we just wrote the story, we had Steph and Aaron on talking about how Google is closing the gap. How do you think about which of these models will, uh, you know, which of these efforts will still be as significant three years from now? Do you see any of these companies pulling back as the competition gets more tight? Uh, do you see one player winning out? How do you think about that? Well, this is a pretty important week um, in a couple of ways. First of all, you know, Google's release of Gemini 3 was very well received. And um, our story yesterday about Sam Altman at OpenAI acknowledging uh, that uh, Google figured out some pretty important training uh, techniques in the kind of early phase of training a model. Um, it really showed that there are still um, differences between the major AI developers. Now, it's not saying that any one of them is racing beyond the others. Um, they're all still in this like elite pack. Um, but it was very, very interesting to see that there are differences between them. And I think it was an extremely kind of bullish week for AI in general in terms of capabilities, because um, Google clearly made some big improvements, especially on um, visual uh, vectors, if you will, kind of creating uh, charts, flow charts, um, anything visual uh, seemed to be uh, much, much improved. Um, and that's always been a very tricky thing for large language models to handle. So overall, a very a uh, positive week, I would say, for this for this in industry, given the kind of um, macro concerns and stock market concerns. As far as your question about who's who's going to um, jump ahead of the others or run away with it or, or, or whatnot, I don't think we have any indication that that that's the case. Obviously, OpenAI um, has talked about wanting to automate the process of AI research itself, which you know they seem to be pretty confident about it. We're really not sure exactly what that looks like, but they've even set some very specific timelines around that. Obviously, if you can automate AI research, um, you're trying to make a bet that you can run away with it. I don't think we're, we're, we're anywhere near that yet. Um, you know, I, I think Martin is, is going to talk a little bit about um, some of the companies and their kind of economic or financial status and how that, that, that can kind of make it difficult for them to, um, to keep up. Uh, the one out of the five that you mentioned, OpenAI, Anthropic, um, XAI, Meta, um, and Google, the, the one that stands out right now that's just sort of nowhere is Meta mm. because it, you know, it doesn't have a frontier model that is right. advanced. It doesn't have, you know, it's, it's really trying to catch up. So I they think hired, the they hired, hired all these people and, and, and now we're, we're waiting. We we are waiting. I think the the only silver lining there, or or kind of hope there, is you know just in the same way that you saw Chinese uh, startups and big companies like Alibaba and DeepSeek um, figure out a way to draft off of the progress of OpenAI plus include some of their own um, you know innovations uh, in in the kind of model building process allowed them to kind of you know, bring up the rear and get get close to those those frontiers. I think that does probably give Meta some hope, but um, but they're the they're they're kind of the outlier right now um, uh, among the five. 
So, Martin, what's what's your take on this from a financial well, lens? I just want to point out to you, and this is how we do discuss things in the meeting. Amir didn't really answer the question. He went on a ramble about the week, which was not what you were asking about. I will <laughs> actually answer the question. And the, the answer is, is, as Amir tried to steal my uh, thunder, but thunder. <laughs> partly answering, Meta is obviously... Uh, got a big problem. They don't have the financial resources that the other companies have. And as Amir points out, their um, their models have sort of fallen behind. The other company I think that really has a long-term problem is XAI. They also don't have the financial resources of the other companies. And, you know, um, um, Elon is trying to do everything himself. And I, I just, you know, I don't think he's got the the um, money. And I think the idea of trying to, to reinvent the wheel on everything, uh, mm. that's not going to work. So my prediction, and look, it's obviously hazardous to make uh, predictions, uh, but I am willing to do that, unlike Amir. Um, I, my prediction is that Google will come out on top. They have they are clearly ahead now on the actual technology. They have the, uh, the range of uh, businesses, they are what OpenAI is trying to become, but they're already there. And OpenAI, I think, will probably uh, also, um, th they will, um, you know, they'll be there in five years' time, but their effort to sort of uh, be in every part of the stack probably is not going to work. Yeah. Uh, and I think Anthropic will be there, but they've they've carved out a particular niche, which, uh, and they'll be fine, so. I mean, I want to... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. There's, a, there's an important distinction here uh, around resources um, versus business model. Uh, and I think what, what Martin's really getting at is it's not as if Meta doesn't have any resources and it's a, it doesn't have a business model for AI. Uh, it, can, it can have AI as an add-on to its existing products. That's not really working. Uh, we don't really have any evidence that that's working. They don't have a new kind of business around AI, um, at least with you know, some of the big tech, other big tech companies like Microsoft and others, like they have a cloud business, they can run AI. Um, and then with the companies we're talking about, they actually have a lot of revenue. XAI is also another big question mark there. Like I do think they have, they would have a lot of resources if they could show that they have a product that's really catching on and that people want to pay for. They just don't quite have that yet. I think they think it's going to be pornography. We'll see. But um, but they that's what they don't have. So I think all these companies can get resources if they have a business behind it. I want to um, ask. Yeah, and right. look, it's also worth pointing out that Meta stock price right now is flat for the year. Uh, as of July, August, it was up like thirty percent. The stock has really fallen. Um, I think it's pretty clear that in, in investors are not happy with Zuckerberg's desire to just keep spending more and more. Um, I think that, you know, if he cares at all about the stock price, he's going to have to eventually pull back. And, you know, yes, he spent a fortune this year hiring all these people. He's um, saying he's going to really try to build capacity before he actually uh, needs it. I, I think, uh, I mean, he said at the start of the year, this will be the year that, that demonstrates whether or not Meta will lead the AI race. So far, this has not worked out at all. And so I'm kind of wondering what he, what will he, uh, how is he going to frame that by the end of the year? I mean, is he going to admit that this year didn't work and is he going to, to, to uh, retool re or is he just going to keep um, spending? I'm pausing because actually I don't even need to ask the questions with the two of you. It's, it's, a, it's a great conversation. I know the two of you talk to each other so much on the phone that, it, you know, that's uh, sometimes you don't even need me. But look, uh, Amir, I want to come back to you because the, the company that's not on this list here at all is Amazon, which is the biggest cloud player. And look, we don't even talk about them. It, it, you know, is there... Is there a, a, a strategy here for them, you know, and, and not being at the forefront of this? I mean, they're a cloud provider. That's what they're leaning into. I think they had some hopes and dreams around developing their own models. They they really did, but it, it hasn't panned out. So that's you know, uh, that's sort of a nice to have for them. It's not a must have. Um, it does mean that Google, as a cloud provider, has a bit of an advantage because they have their in-house model, Gemini, that more and more businesses are gravitating toward. 
Um, and Amazon doesn't really have that. They really lean on Anthropic for, for so many things. Um, but it's, it's not a total disaster because they have these other businesses. So you can think of them more as like, a, um, you know, a Microsoft, if you will. Right. Martin, wh- why do you, why do you think it's, it's, you know, uh, not gone so well for Amazon? You know, uh, obviously having a big cloud business is a big benefit to anyone trying to build an AI. Why hasn't it panned out? Do you think? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think, firstly, I think that, um, the game is not over for Amazon. They're also a very big company. They've got a very, they obviously got, they've got the biggest cloud operation. Um, I think we should, probably shouldn't rule them out. Uh, but I also think that they, I mean, they don't have a b- business like Google, uh, has, which makes a huge amount of money. Their, um, commerce operation is a fairly low margin business. So they, they don't really have the resources that, uh, Google has, for instance, or even Microsoft. So, um, you know, I'm not sure. I, I think we shouldn't rule them out yet though. Right. They, they've, ne- they've never really recruited like the other. So when you hear about recruiting battles in AI, which is really the whole game and you saw this summer, it was all about recruiting. Um, Amazon's not in that conversation. Right. Amir, last question for you. What are the big reporting questions that you are talking to other other folks in the newsroom about the answers that you really want with respect to any of these of these five frontier companies? I think just fundamentally, we continue to focus the most on what is the trajectory of the technology in terms of the capabilities that it has. Um, that's the thing that you know our readers want to know about the most. And so when we do articles that that get into the weeds of, you know, let's say the reinforcement learning process and and what OpenAI has been doing there as an example. Um, that's what people really, really care about because, um, you know, ultimately, you know, we, we want to know how quickly are things going to improve. You have all these statements from the different AI developers. It's hard to know what's real, what's not real. Sometimes they overpromise, sometimes they underpromise. Um, so I think that's why I come back to what I said in the beginning. Like it was a good week, I think, for the entire industry to see, um, you know. That though, yeah. it was a good week for the industry from one perspective, which might be from the actual um, research perspective. It was a terrible week for the industry as far as stocks. I mean, we've seen, you know, there are real questions now. Investors have clearly gotten nervous. Uh, NVIDIA stock is down a lot in the last uh, three weeks. Uh, as I said, Meta has fallen a lot. Um, it's just, I think the, the market overall is very nervous. So from that perspective, it has not been a uh, good week. Yeah. If you're saying that the market may have bit, you know, bid up prices too high, um, that, that's sort of another, another question. And, and I think we can expect, you know, kind of ups and downs along the way, but if the underlying technology does continue to improve that's that's just going to be good for everyone in the long term that is in this field it may not be good for young people graduating trying to it get won't jobs, be good for it... the rest of the world <laughs> no one will have a job there won't be any power available we'll all be paying more for for, for power um all these people will be dependent on ai and chatbots for their uh, the therapy it'll be awful the... for the world but hey Sam Altman will be rich. No, no. The, the the second and third order effects, I think, um, are very heavily debated. Don't forget, Sam Altman only gets a salary from the nonprofit of a hundred thousand dollars. I don't think he gets any he equity gets from no, OpenAI. He, has, he will not make any money if OpenAI becomes a trillion dollar company. Completely believe that. Um, okay. Well, again, indirectly, not directly, but yeah. All right. Well. We could keep it going, but I actually fully believe you're going to pick up the phone and talk to each other right after we what else we hang up. So, uh, thank you both for coming on. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna encourage you both to come on more because it's a it's a, a great co-executive editor dynamic. Um, we will talk to you both again very soon. Thanks.